Park is the only Native American zoo in the United States. They are a Navajo Nation government program within the Department of Fish and Wildlife and have six very dedicated full-time staff. Their mission statement is available for your viewing. The zoo has been in existence since 1977, and you can read about their history and the history of the zoo logos. The zoo has over 100 animals of 50 different species. Nearly all of their resident animals are native to the Navajo Nation, and most of their animals were found injured or orphaned on the reservation. Since these animals are unable to live in the wild, they are housed here and provided daily professional care. According to the website, the Navajo Zoo provides an excellent opportunity for visitors to learn about, make a connection with, the native animals of the Navajo lands, and a quiet atmosphere. It's set among the natural sandstone terrain of Winter Rock and provides a unique experience for its 50,000 annual visitors. Upon my visit, the first thing that I noticed was, it was quiet. Josh, we sing the joyful songs of falling rain. In the Dene way, Josh is a symbol of water and fertility. When you hear the croaking of the frogs at night, it's the frog people singing for the coming of fertile rains to bless the land, the crops, and people. The gift display is modest and accounts for mainly souvenirs, which speaks highly of its not-for-profit ideals and not charging for animals that have their own lives. Interesting to note that its Adopt an Animal program actually does name the animals who are adopted. For example, in the invertebrate area, black widow spiders, scorpions, and tarantulas all have names except for one. The Navajo Zoo has one black widow spider exhibit on the Discovery Center and the spider's name is Dana. It has two desert hairy scorpions from southern Arizona on exhibit. One of these scorpions' name is Duster, the other one does not sadly have a name because it has never been adopted. And the tarantula, her name is Betty. Not Jeanne. Lizards. The most interesting thing about the Chuckwalla is, unlike most of the lizards in the Southwest, the Chuckwalla is actually a vegetarian, so it does manage to eat a lot of vegetables, fruits, and flowers. Whereas the smaller ones, the plateau striped whiptail and the fence lizard, usually eat insects, crickets, spiders, and ants. They love to eat bugs, which is kind of gross. These are interesting casts of various animals' paws and feet. The Gila monster is the biggest lizard in the southwest and the only other venomous one in the world besides the Mexican beetle lizard. These two actually started off as illegal pets before they were apprehended and cared for here. The black-footed ferret has been native to North America for at least 100,000 years. Prairie dog removal efforts caused a great decline to the ferret's range and population. It was actually thought to be extinct, but recovery efforts have been a success with 28 sites in the U.S. with wild ferrets. Navajo Unknown Do you know the name of the ringtail in Navajo? Let us know. Although I am native to the Navajo Nation, me and my ringtail friends are rarely seen. We are very shy animals, and they only come out at night. This is likely the reason that we ringtails do not appear in any of the common Navajo stories. One of the more interesting things is the living diorama that's inside of the building, complete with recirculating water which makes a small pool for both the fox and the turtles. Surprisingly, there's also a Canadian goose. Nejo de The first world was a black world, surrounded by four cloud columns. White dawn on the east, blue daylight on the south, yellow twilight on the west, and black night on the north. In the beginning, only holy people and insects lived there. Later, first man and first woman were formed in the first world. Nehotoktij, the second world, was a blue world. In the second world, first man and first woman found birds, insects, and animals. When they arrived, first man opened his medicine bundle which contained the four clouds he had brought from the first world, and the clouds rose again at the edges of the second world. Nehatso, the third world, was a yellow world. When the people emerged into the third world, they found two rivers, a female river running east to west and a male river running north to south. First man put the jewels where they belonged. White shell in the east, turquoise in the south, abalone in the west, and jet in the north. Nihalkai, the fourth world, was a glittering world. When Locust and the holy people first emerged, they found the world covered with water. They tried several times to drain the flood, but every time the waters came back up. Then first man discovered that Coyote had stolen Water Monster's baby. He forced Coyote to throw the baby back down the reed, and the floods receded. 
I had actually thought that I came in early enough to where the animals wouldn't be hot, but as soon as I went outside, I had felt the absence of air conditioning, something fierce. It was extremely hot and extremely humid, but I was happy to catch a few of them out in the open relishing the warmth. Kabamai Raccoon, the curious masked one. Kabamai is a major player in two Navajo ceremonies. In fact, it is the accredited with developing one of them, the mountaintop ceremony. I know the zoo would probably be not on the top places where people would want to have birthday parties or any type of celebration, but looking at that outdoor gazebo has given me some ideas. Chi red-tailed hawk, the efficient one. Chi is revered by the Navajo people as a fast, efficient predator that makes no mistakes. Because of this, their feathers can be tied to arrows so they fly true and make definite kills without mistakes. Chi feathers are also used in certain Navajo ceremonies and can be tied to a horse's mane or tail to give them speed. Using their sharp talons and powerful feet, Chi swiftly swoop down on prey while hunting in flight or from an elevated perch. Tunji, wild turkey, the colorful one. The Tunji is important in the Navajo culture as it was the last being to emerge into the current world, bringing seeds and kernels with it. Navajo people benefited by planting these seeds for an abundance of melons, squash, corn, beans, etc. Turkey feathers are all important to possess for promoting growth and prosperity. Navajo stories report that Tunji's tail feathers are tipped in white because they were stained by the rising floodwaters during the emergence into this world. One of the heaviest birds in the Navajo Nation, turkeys are used as food by people and large predators. Since the summertime does heat things up rather quickly, I would advise somebody who does plan on visiting to come early in. Possibly as soon as it opens, because a lot of the times the animals tend to want to cool off, especially in hotter weather. I believe there is a big misconception when it comes to any type of enclosures with animals, especially if they're held outside. People may assume all there is to see is empty enclosures and cages, however, they neglect to understand it gets really, really hot. So, I would say the best time again is early morning, after it rains, or when it's very cloudy. That'll be the best opportunity to view them while they're relaxed, cool, and happy. Maithlapai, gray fox, the grizzled one. Both the red fox and gray fox are important in at least one traditional Navajo ceremony. During the nightway ceremony, they represent all the animal life on Earth and are thought to provide a connection between the holy people and humans. Unlike most members of the dog family, canids, the maithlapai, has strong hooked claws making it quite comfortable climbing trees. Tree climbing provides protection from predators and access to food. Scattered throughout the park are a couple of benches that I could definitely see turning into an impromptu picnic amongst friends. Maithetsoi, red fox, the distinguished one. The distinguished Maithetsoi sports a bright red coat, black legs, and a white tipped tail. The vertical pupils also make it unique among our canids. Scent glands at the base of the tail provide the fox with its distinctive odor and ability to scent mark its territory. Maithetsoi lives in tight family groups and uses a variety of vocalizations to communicate. As you're walking around, you may see little boxes that ask for donations. Outside assistance really does help them to provide better services and an improved facility for the visitors. I have come to this zoo many, many times over the course of the last 15 to 20 years. And every time that I've visited, there was always some improvement to the infrastructure, to the animals, to the cages, to the living conditions, to structures within. The playground, for instance, was something that I believe was a recent ad, and so is the aviary. Ne'esja, great horned owl, the messenger. In Navajo culture, Ne'esja was created from one child of great bird, while the other child was made into an eagle. The owl is respected as a messenger and is often believed to inform others of danger or neglect. Owl feathers are used in certain Navajo ceremonies to make offerings, to decorate headgear, and as a ritual broom to banish evil. With as many times as I've come through here, going to elementary school and junior high, I feel like it never gets old. There's always something new to see, and even if you've seen the same things, the animals always change. They don't do the same things every time you see them. Ashiadeza, 
Fort Hogan. This Navajo Fork Stick Hogan is a conical shaped earthen lodge built by Atsehasti and Atsehasana after emerging into the present day fourth world. Atsehasti and Atsehasana were met by Hasheyasti, chief deity and also called the grandfather of the holy people, who instructed them on how to build their Hogan. Male Hogans are constructed mainly to hold ceremonial chants and healing rites, not for living in. You know, I've lived here most of my life, and what's interesting about it is, is that it always manages to surprise me. A good example of this is if you go on a walk, right, you're apt to discover something different about the flora and fauna depending on the time of day you go. Being Navajo here feels like being among a huge extended family, and I don't quite think that feeling can be found anywhere else. My Coyote, the curious one. Ma'i is one of the most common characters in Navajo traditional stories. He's considered to be one of the original sacred animals and depicts a warrior and a survivor. Traditional stories about Ma'i are only told in the winter and most of the stories are humorous but have moral teachings. Ma'i is known to be curious which tends to get him into trouble. In many stories he's represented as mean, greedy, and a liar. Much to his detriment he's often outwitted by the animals he tries to trick. Shashlijina, black bear, the fierce one. The bear is a fierce wild animal that's considered to be very spiritual. He lives in a spiritual place, the mountain wilderness. He inhales pure air, which has spiritual power. He breathes in a powerful positive energy to strengthen his internal fortitude and growls with great strength. The force of his growl frightens his enemies. Shash is one of the most sacred animals for the Diné and believed to have given them protection prayers and songs. If you're taking your time and you have your kids along, usually it takes a little bit longer than an hour. And usually, with kids, they're going to be antsy. So, a good tip to keep in mind is to pack some snacks, maybe something to drink, because you're eventually going to get a little hungry and probably thirsty. Nashduitso, cougar, the silent one. Mountain lions, or cougars, are revered for the silent secret of nature and the extreme power they possess. They capture large prey with quick ambush and a powerful bite. The Navajo Nation opened its Golden Eagle Sanctuary and Education Center on July 1st, 2016. The facility features natural landscaping and a quiet, tranquil environment for injured, non-releasable golden eagles. The eagles have many perching opportunities within the 4,000 square feet open-air building and a waterfall pond to provide natural background sound. Golden Eagle, a Sajjin in the Navajo language, is a bird of prey living in the Northern Hemisphere. It's the most widely distributed species of eagle. They are also one of the best known birds of prey. These birds are dark brown with lighter golden brown plumage on their naves. These eagles use their agility, speed, powerful feet, and massive sharp talons to snatch up a variety of prey, including hares, rabbits, marmots, and other ground squirrels. They maintain home ranges that may be as large as 77 square miles. They build nests in cliffs and other high places which they may return to for several breeding years. Most of those activities take place in the spring. They're monogamous and may remain together for life. The females lay up to four eggs and they incubate them for six weeks. Bee, mule deer, the respected one. Navajo people have hunted bee for centuries and have uses for all parts of the animal as food, clothing, tools, or ceremonial items. Traditionally, mule deer are greatly respected and represent Mother Earth, the sky, the mountains, the animals, and the plants. Tsetatebe, bighorn sheep, the sacred sheep. Well known for their head crashing combats during the mating season, the rare desert bighorn sheep is found on the Navajo Nation only in the most dry, rugged, rocky canyons. They exhibit impressive agility and sure-footedness on cliff ledges and can go weeks without visiting permanent water. I want to say it again. I look around here and I see so much potential. It's changed so much since I came here with my grandfather who used to be an officer for the Fish and Wildlife Department. Nashdui Thabai, Bobcat. Nashdui Thabai is important in Navajo traditions for helping badger enlarge the hole from the underworld for beings to emerge into this world. The bile and claws of the bobcat are used in traditional ceremonies. Bobcat pelts were fashioned into capes worn by Navajo warriors in battle and the victory dances afterwards. Pelts were also made into quivers so that the bobcat's hunting prowess would rub off on the arrows. Known to be highly adaptable in habitat and prey preferences, the Nashdui Thabai is a silent, solitary, nocturnal 
predator on a diverse array of smaller animals. However, at times it will take down larger prey like wild turkey and deer. Its striking coloration provides natural camouflage. Hogan the Maze, Round Hogan. The female Hogan is most associated with the Navajo people because it functions as their domiciles as opposed to the male Hogan, which is for ceremonies. An interesting fact about yucca roots, a long time ago they used to be used for shampoo. Crow, Gagi, is often considered a carrion eater and is classed with birds of negative potential. He's also difficult to persuade. Crow is important in the Night Chan war ceremony. The Prairie Falcon is a large falcon of the arid west. It's nearly the size of the famous peregrine, but differs in its hunting behavior, often pursuing small prey with rapid maneuverable flight close to the ground. Although it's characteristic of desolate plains and desert wilderness, this falcon can also be adapted to altered landscapes. In the winter, it's often seen flying over southwestern cities or hunting horned larks in farm country. As much as we try, this video does not do the zoo any justice. It does not nearly encompass the amount of animals that are actually here. Only what we can afford to put up in the time allowed. So if you have time, please swing by. If possible, donate a few dollars here and there because every bit helps. Thank you for watching this video and taking a peek into the Navajo Nation Zoo. Again.